when it comes to weather to fly, you can't beat this. But this type of day doesn't always happen. More often than not, we're faced with a wide variety of ceilings and visibility, and that's why there are minimum requirements for flying with visual reference to the ground. The fact is, required ceiling and visibility limits should only serve as a baseline for safety. Every pilot needs to set their own minimum limits, and they should be greater than what's required to allow for an additional margin of safety. For example, there are times when a pilot may take off with a forecast of good visibility and low ceilings. That forecast may give you confidence, but keep in mind that the only constant about weather is change. In-flight visual estimation of a ceiling's base is not an exact science. And while flying around hills or mountains, a lowering ceiling can gradually sneak up on a pilot flying under visual flight rules. When this happens, nervousness sets in and the risk for errors increases as the pilot may attempt to skim the cloud base to stay clear of the ground. Added are the dangers of towers and their support wires poking into the clouds that are difficult to see and to navigate around. In conjunction with low ceilings, pilots that continue in weather with fog, mist, haze or smoke can be caught in conditions in which they begin to lose or have lost all visual contact. And when that happens, a simple 180 might not be enough. Studies show, using simulators, pilots without instrument training, having lost all visual reference will take as little as 20 seconds to about 178 seconds on average before losing control and entering a spiral dive. When it comes to flying visually, the basic rule is to fly in good weather. Get an accurate forecast before you take off and monitor the weather while you're in flight. Set your own limitations based on visibility at or above the regulated minima and stick to them.